I got the tattoo to prove it. You do? Can we see it? <laughs> we gotta take my on and off. All right, so for everyone listening, he's, he's got a Rutgers shirt on. He's, oh, it's a bicep and it's just a beautiful fish. Beautiful sea bass. Yes, that was Sebastian Rivera. And this is On the Bench with Mike Hall. That's me. Sebastian Rivera is a senior wrestler at Rutgers, though he started his collegiate career at Northwestern. Why did he transfer? Because of New Jersey. We'll get to that in a second. First, you need to know how good he is. While he was in Evanston, he was a three-time All-American and a two-time Big Ten champion as a lightweight wrestler. He won the league title in the spring of 2019, then again in the spring of 2020. This most recent time, he was also named the most outstanding wrestler in the tournament. But his ties to New Jersey are deep, really deep. His dad was a national champion himself at the College of New Jersey. Sebastian is from there and quite proud about it. For example, last year, the Big Ten Wrestling Championship was held in Jersey. After he won the Big Ten title, he got on the microphone and loudly said, quote, Come on, look at this place. Who doesn't want to win in Jersey? Come on, look at this. Every time. It's just Jersey, man. We're a different breed. Always will be. TRNJ all day, baby. So I started my chat with him, which we taped back in the early winter, by simply asking, what is it about New Jersey people? Man, we're just, like I said, a different breed. We're just a lot tougher. Um, I just feel like I fit in better in New Jersey because just because of who I am and I got tough skin. Everybody around me has like tough skin. So I don't know. It's just like being back home. I can be myself. I kind of had to hold back a little bit in the Midwest. Um, so it, that's just what I mean. And then, I mean, New Jersey, some of the best wrestling in the country. So like, like I said, the high schoolers, the middle schoolers, I coach a lot of them. So I get to see on every aspect, like what New Jersey wrestling is and we're a tough group. So. Yeah, but Sebastian, aren't you tough because you're a wrestler, not because you happen to be born in a certain state? Um, I want to say I'm tough because my mom's from New Jersey and she's a Puerto Rican. That's why I want to say I'm tough. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm tough. That's probably true. Yeah. Um, okay, so, but explain, elaborate more for me. What What is Jersey different? Why are you guys a different breed besides just being tough? Because a lot of places think they're tough. Yes. Um. Honestly, to break it down for you, like if you go in the Midwest, everything's a lot slower. Um, we're just fast paced in your face, like not afraid of anybody type of mentality. And like you see when you're driving, you see it like in everyday things, you see people just like, like, what, the, what, what are you doing? Like, what are you looking at? Like stuff like that, you know? And then that's just who I like, kind of like what I am. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm a New Jersey and that's what New Jersey's all about, you know? So that's like what I mean. But like it's everyday stuff. It's not just an on the wrestling mat. Right. So you're saying you see someone on the street and you're like going to go, what, what? You see it. You see it. Uh, not me personally, but like, I'm like, respect. I mean, I get it. You're from New Jersey. What, what do you think the outside perspective of New Jersey is? Everybody thinks everybody's everybody outside of Jersey thinks New Jersey is like a dirt place. This they're dirty. Like I always hear that the armpit of America, um, <laughs> stuff like that. But I don't know. They don't get it. They're not from here. So why would I take their opinion, you know? Okay. So you're not saying they're wrong or are you saying they're wrong? There's some, that's what it's called dirty Jersey for a reason. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's definitely called dirty Jersey for a reason. Give me, give me like a, a mental tour guide. If I'm visiting Jersey and you want to prove to me, it's not dirty Jersey. Where, yeah. where are the places I got to go? Okay. I'll take you. Tom's River is nice where I'm from, but like the shore area, obviously there's a lot of nice places a lot of nice houses um but then if i want to show you the dirty side of the shore i'll take you to seaside heights straight to boardwalk you know so i'll give you a taste of both i'm not gonna hide it from you um i i i know just as well as everybody else dude we got some sketchy dirty spots but we embrace it so yeah i mean the shore is nice north jersey is nice a lot of nice places up in north jersey but yeah i'm from the shore so i'll show you seaside park seaside heights show you the best of both worlds well, you made the natural transition. Let's talk Jersey Shore, the show. How accurate? What do you mean? The Jersey Shore? Oh, that's dramatic. But great show. One of the greatest shows of all time. <laughs> okay. So you love it, but it's it's not an accurate portrayal? No, nah, no. I mean, it's over dramatic. Yeah, it's just very dramatic. But 
it's come on everybody knows it's a great show but uh yeah it's not really accurate i would say in your life how many times have you said gtl never i'm yeah. not a i'm not a big gym guy that that's where you would lose me wait um, the wrestler is not a big gym guy uh, i i've never stepped foot honestly i've never stepped foot in like a crunch or like a planet fitness to lift like it's only been if if maybe if i'm getting forced to do it for the team but I, I've been starting to embrace it a little bit more because I'm trying to get bigger and right. maybe a little bit more gym now. Tan all the time. Though. So you, you're <laughs> the second you're done wrestling and you don't have to be in a gym. I'm not going to be in a gym. Yeah. Nah, no, no, no. We're gonna I, start I, I'll wrestle though. I'll keep wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just float up. Yeah, maybe. That's what they, everybody tells me, including my parents, you're going to be a, a tick after wrestling's over. <laughs> You'll be a tick? Yeah, just like I'll just blow up with all blood, you know. Just like get huge. Is what like it is. It. If uh, if you were closest to someone on Jersey Shore, who would it be? J Wow, you're like J Wow, aren't you? Mm, J Wow, nah. I I know Roger. I don't know J Wow's husband. Oh yeah, definitely well. So I don't know. He's he's a normal guy. I feel like we get along. So I compare myself to him. I guess if I had to pick somebody, which. Because they're different generations. Which show is more beloved in New Jersey? Jersey Shore or The Sopranos? Ooh, I've never watched The Sopranos, but I hear about it all the time. So yeah. I would say it depends on who you ask. I would say you get like a 50-50. Right. If you're over 30, it's probably Sopranos. Sopranos, 100%. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So you've got this deep passion for New Jersey. Um, how is it only now you're at Rutgers? How are you there right away? Well, give me the story mm -hmm. of your college decision and the journey you've been on. Yeah, uh, Matt Storniolo, uh, Cody Brewer, Andrew out at the time, they just, they made Northwestern appealing and it was appealing. I mean, it's the number nine school in the country academically and we got to think about futures here. There's life after wrestling. So I took the chance with them and it turned out great. No regrets. Love every second at Northwestern with the coaches, everything like that but I just thought it was time to come home. I mean, I'm starting to run my dad's wrestling club a little bit, starting to get more involved and stuff like that. So I, I feel like being home was the right decision for me personally. It's not nothing against Northwestern. I love the guys there. I still talk to them every day, somebody every day from Northwestern I'm talking to on their team, but um, just personally, I just thought I needed to come back home and start to handle my stuff, get my business straight. So to do the transfer, were you, like, did you have to go through the portal? Yes. What's that like? Ah, it's not bad. You just got to talk to, I talked to the Northwestern coaches. It was like, I want to be put in the portal and they have like 24 hours to do it. So then I was in the portal and then it's easy from there. Okay. So it wasn't like a big headache or anything. Nah, like no, it's super easy. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you've been, how, what was the first time you started wrestling? Four or five years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you take to it right away or did it take a while? No, my dad was a wrestling coach and he was like, I'm going. So if you want to come, you could come, but I'm not going to force you. And I kind of think that hands off, like kind of type of parenting from my dad really attracted me to the sport. He didn't force me to come to practice he didn't force me to do anything I didn't want to do. So the, it made me more appealed because he was doing it. I was like, All right, I want to be like my dad. So I'm going to go with him and learn. And yeah, that's why I think I really excelled in wrestling because my dad's coaching style was really hands off this it's your decision you do what you want to do well he was a really good wrestler himself yeah so he got he gets it so that's why i think he was so good at being a parent and coach right um what age in your life was the first time you could take him down on a mat oh uh, man maybe my freshman year of college oh that it took that long oh yeah he's good he's still good to this day <laughs> like he'll, he he makes me work to this day and i'm like 20 pounds heavier than him to take him down but um He's yeah, he's super good. And I, I say this all the time, like he would be like top 15, 125 pounders in the country right now. Really? I, I personally believe so. So he's still in shape. He, he, does he hit the gym more than Sebastian? Does? He wrestles four or five times a week. The guy, he wrestles probably more than me. He's out of his mind. Really? Yeah. His body hasn't broken down yet. He complains, but man, it don't look like it's breaking down anytime soon. He's like, my back hurts, blah, blah, blah. But then as soon as he starts getting warm, you just see him get it going. He's like, he just keeps going. I don't know how. He's 51 now. So what, give me an idea what your diet is right now. Right now, um, we eat a lot of e uh, Clean Bro. 
because yeah. we get those meals. So, and then Rutgers gives us meals. So it's just a lot of eat clean, bro. And Rutgers meals, nothing crazy. Um, sometimes I'll spoil myself. Like we're not close to any competitions right now. So I might throw in a cheat meal here and there, but it's pretty clean right now, which is good. I feel pretty good. And when it's full on competition, how different do things get diet wise? Um, yeah, it's just chicken, vegetables, eggs, boring. Yeah. Not fun. The, the, the lucky charms isn't a part of the, of nah. the <laughs> if I, I, once a week, you have to put something in you that is good for like, not good for you, but like feels good to, t- you know? So like once a week I'll do that, like maybe a couple scoops of ice cream, something like that, but you got to do something. Cause it's just a long season. So you're talking to someone who is never an athlete at the level you are. How hard and frustrating is that when you're like, okay, day 36 in a row of broccoli and chicken? Yeah, they're just like, they don't, yeah, it's hard. They don't, it's hard to explain to somebody like that because they don't get it. It's just, you got to put the right things in in order to get the right energy back out. So they, they understand that part, but then like the part, like, they'll be like, why don't you just drink water? That's zero calories. You're like, come, come on. Like they just don't get like what the weight, how weight works and stuff. So it gets frustrating, but I don't know, try to be nice, I guess. Did you ever have like slip ups when you were younger? Like, I don't know, I'll just go get some fast food right before this meet or something and pay for it. I've never missed weight. So no, really? I've never missed weight that I can think about. I almost missed weight at Maryland last year. My first match back after my injury, I almost missed weight, but the coaches got me down. I was like 32.8, but yeah, that's like, I'm usually pretty good with my weight, so I've what, never missed weight. What was that feeling like? You when were... I almost missed it, wow. oh, I was terrified. It's like such a scary, I had like 10 minutes to lose 0. 0.8 or 0. 0.6. And it, I was just, my body was hurting. And What'd you do? It was like stance in motion, high knees, sprint down and back. Like eh, it was just in like for 10 minutes straight. And then I made weight though. So I, I got to give it to the coaches for getting me down there. So again, someone who, who doesn't do what you do, how's that you could lose that much weight in that short amount of time? Yeah, I have, yeah, hundred percent. Um, <laughs> with the right clothes on, you can lose anything, I feel like. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was yeah, that still gives me like PTSD. I'm like, oh like uh, what's what's the worst feeling that could happen? And you can include um, you know, missing weight or it could be a move somebody puts on you, or like, what's the worst feeling you can have? losing oh just you're saying me? just losing yeah. yeah that's the worst feeling somebody who's better than you that day and that sucks so i would say losing by far how long how long does it take you to get over a loss oh I'll, i don't forget it until i beat you again really and I if i like- never get to beat you it always in my mind like that guy beat me and i don't have a chance to redeem myself but you get that you get over but it's still it's still there you know I, I don't love that you looked directly into the camera at me when you said, I'll beat you. That was a little intimidating <laughs> and I got a little afraid, but, <laughs> but I understand you meant more. Yes. You, right, yeah. Not me specifically. Yes. Yes. What is the worst part about being a wrestler? Um, see, there's a lot of work, like a lot of worst parts, but you got to embrace them. I feel like there's a lot of things that aren't fun in wrestling. It's not a fun sport. But what's what's fun is winning. Cutting weights terrible. Um, going for that extra run to lose the pa- two cu- couple pounds you have to lose is terrible. But you do it because at the end of the day you always want to win and you got to sacrifice. You got to put things on the line. So I don't. I think there's a lot of things that are the worst part about wrestling, but they're just part of the life. Are you like you, to do all this? You've got to be super disciplined. Are you super disciplined on everything? in life like do you kind of run your life that way or like is it just wrestling where I'm super focused and everything else I'm just kind of relaxing see I'm a big believer in balance so there's got to be balance in your life um but like during the season I'm pretty straightforward just I'm playing video games doing school work and wrestling that's like about it you know um off season you can throw other things in there right you got social life a little bit but during the wrestling season it's pretty straightforward if you want to be good you know yeah, right. you got to sacrifice, like I said. Would you put your right ear in the category of what's great or what stinks about wrestling? Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, I only just got it in college, so 
it took me a while. Um, like junior, no, maybe even senior year. I that was the first time I got it. So, and then now it's just huge, hard. But yeah, it's not a bad thing. Only thing no. is you can't put it, I can't put AirPods in. So that kind of sucks. But that's about it. The cauliflower ear means you can't put an. an I ear- can't put an AirPod in like in my ear. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a bummer. It's all right. They're overrated. <laughs> Has it affected your hearing though? Um, I always had bad ears, but I feel like sometimes I'm like, what'd you say? I got, yeah, it does a little bit, depending on where you get it. Like I have it inside my ear too. It's not just up here. So it does, it closes. Does the yeah. cauliflower ear ever go away? No, never. No, I, I've seen people like trying out things. Like there's like a magnet you can put on it and like, it just oh. like starts putting it loose, like breaking it down. But I don't know. I'm expecting to have this chicken nugget forever. <laughs> I like calling it chicken nugget. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the stereotype about wrestlers that's the least accurate? Mm. Stereotype. Um, I don't know. I mean, give me a stereotype, and I'll tell you if it's true or not. I don't even know. Cauliflower ear. <laughs> true. <laughs> that's accurate. A lot of us do. Um, were you telling uh, you're the one who walks around all day? People think we're serious all the time. I feel like people like are scared to approach me, like I'm gonna be like mean or something. I mean, we're just people. I don't yeah. know. I get that one a lot. Like people, like are scared to approach me. They think I have like a mean face on all the time. I'm just, especially during the season, I definitely got a mean face on. But like I'm approachable. I'm just another another person, you know. Well, the reason we wanted to have you on was because you're a pro. I mean, you're, you're, you're not an intent. You're sea bass. <laughs> I got the tattoo to prove it. You do? Can we see it? <laughs> yeah. I gotta take my arm out. All right. So for everyone listening, he's, he's got a Rutgers shirt on. He's, oh, it's a bicep and it's just a beautiful fish. Beautiful sea bass. <laughs> when did you get that? <laughs> um, the beginning of last season. Yeah, so I've had it for a while now. It's it's a a lot of people like it too. So I've I haven't really gotten any bad comments on it. So that's a good thing. Well, because it goes, it's perfectly understandable. Yeah, right. Who is the first one to call you Seabass? It started when I was like maybe nine when I was playing soccer, though. So it wasn't even wrestling. Like my she's like my second mom, Darlene. She came up with the name Seabass and that's when I started getting called it, but it, it was like the letter C and M D A S S. So, and then it's just now transformed to the fit, you know, it's just had to transform to what it is today, but yeah, that's when it first started. Sebastian. Yeah. I like it. So, yeah. but you like, you know, you are a fun guy. You've got the tattoo. There's a nickname. You love the microphone after a win. Like, do you <laughs> see part of who you are is that of a performer? You have to. Um, a lot of people like to talk crap about me and others that are very vocal after we win or have things to say, but I mean, we put this all on the line and when we win, we're excited and we have a lot of emotions and we're going to let them go. And if you don't like that, then don't watch us. I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's, I think people think wrestling is supposed to be a guy that's humble wins. Yeah, I agree with all that, but you, how do you sell a sport? Like wrestling is not a really sellable sport. It's very, a lot of people, and you saw Bryce Meredith talking about it this weekend. Like we, we have to sell, we're trying to make money here too, eventually, you know? So I'm trying to sell myself. I'm trying to brand myself. And if you don't like, it, it's kind of your issue, but that's just what we're doing now. And especially because we can get paid now in NCAA in a couple months here. It's more than just a sport now. Right. A little bit. We're well, performers. It's more fun, isn't more it? More fun. I think it's more fun. Yeah. Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. Speaking of fun, I've got to imagine there are certain arenas in the big 10 that are more fun than others to perform in. Which ones do you most enjoy wrestling in? Um, I never got to wrestle at Penn state, so I can't really comment on recall. Uh, Carver Hawkeyes intimidating. Yeah, obviously, but yep. um, oh, I've, all the fans are up high. I've only wrestled once there. It was a good match, but yeah, uh, the rack's fun, loud, yeah. New Jersey people. I'd say those are top three. Everywhere else, like even Northwestern, like there's just not that many people yeah. that are that invested in wrestling. Like, 
Give me it like stinks. what stinks that some Big Ten schools have seven thousand people showing up and others have five hundred. Yeah, it's just different, but it's just you got to be able to wrestle in any atmosphere. Right, and I assume that you can. It's harder when there's seven thousand people and you're on the road. On the road, on- yes, but when it's home, like when it's going to be at the rack, I'm going to be, I'm going to feed off of it. I love that. <laughs> Give me like design the best arena. If if they say we want you to make an arena, what has what elements have to be there for it to be a great wrestling environment? Um, I think the rack carver and rec hall do a great job of this being able to fit that many people. Like a lot of places can't fit that many people. Um, yeah, but you need that. I think when you start putting the smoke, the fire that all these big time schools are doing now, they're putting smoke as you run out, fire as you run out, just like make it a show. Cause that's what it is. Um, yeah, I just think you can set it, you can put it in Carver Hawkeye. And I think a Carver Hawkeye is a great way to make the other team feel intimidated and your team feel loved, you know? Right. All right. Probably the most important question I have for you is how can we improve the singlet? Oh, singlet. I think two pieces are ugly. So that's just not yeah. like a shirt, short, like eh. improve this singlet. I think they're fine. I don't know why. They're okay. Do you think people, but people say that they're not fine? Well, I'm just curious. Like you'd never wear it out in the town, I would assume, right? Yeah, probably not. I'm just saying, you know, it feels yeah. like it might not be the most comfortable thing to wear. It's not bad. There's some bad ones for sure that hurt. Um, nah, I, I really, it's I, okay. what else would we wear though? What, what else would we wear if it wasn't a spandex wear, tight? It has stuff. to be tight. Right. Yeah. It has to be tight. Um, I think that's the best option. Because if it was loose. You get caught. You could be swung around. You could be. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Fingers and getting busted. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a very good, uh, good design. You won the most outstanding wrestler at the Big Ten tournament. Does that come with a trophy? Yes. Where is it? Um, might be in my dad's office or my grandpa's. My grandpa has a big, one of the sickest like displays of all my dad's, my uncle's trophies and mine. Yeah. And it's it's unbelievable, honestly. I, I'll post a picture on my Instagram story. Maybe you'll catch it, but today because I'm, I'm going to my grandparents today but okay. um yeah i uh i think it's probably in there in my dad's office my dad has a lot of my stuff too like more recent but every medal i've ever won any bracket anybody i've ever wrestled is in a book with my in my grandpa's house he, he has every match recorded that i've ever wrestled in my life wait he's got every match recorded too like written down but since my freshman year of high school every match is recorded too since my really? freshman year of high school, he did. He started out in high school, like re- videoing them. But he has every like one before that written down, score, win, loss. Like he has my like, lifetime record. Like yeah, he has everything to a wow. team. Does Does anyone ever rewatch the matches? I I'll go back and sit in bed and watch Matt like high school matches and see how much I've gotten better, how bad I was in high school and stuff. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's really cool. So was did he wrestle too, or did he just become a super fan because your dad was so good? He, he, I think he dabbled in wrestling. He was a coach for a while. I don't think he was a really big swimmer though. Really good at swimming. But um, yeah, my dad started wrestling and then, yeah, that's kind of how he got so invested. I have a great grandfather who was the swimming and diving coach at the University of Chicago way back in the day when they were in the Big Ten. Wow. And the story goes is he is the first one to ever put the flutter kick with the freestyle arms together really that used to be like the breaststroke and the flutter yeah. combined no way. i don't know if that's true that feels that's hard a pretty to- good fact though if you that's a good like fun fact about yourself like you're right? like yeah my grand grandpa yeah, yeah that's awesome I, I, can't, I can't prove it but he's credited with that's with awesome that. um yeah i was thinking too about you winning that uh the big 10 title like that stuff happened like hours before covid shut down the world like you guys barely got it in yes and you see how many people were in there (laughs) it's probably a good thing they shut it down then before Uh, yeah crazy wow um who was your favorite wrestler growing up a lot of people ask me that um 
if I'm being honest, like I didn't see wrestling outside of like region six, region six is like the short conference area of where I was from. So my favorite wrestlers growing up were like Vinny Delafav, who's like my big brother, like Scotty Winston, Seidenbergs, all these guys that wrestled at my dad's club that I would go watch on Sunday, watch them all win the region six tournament, like the toughest tournament in the state. So yeah, we, and then they all went to Rutgers, believe it or not, all those guys. So yeah, like just the guys I watched in my room growing up as a kid, like I, that's who I looked up to. Like, yeah, that's it's, just it. Were, were you ever, um, I mean, were you ever into pro wrestling? Were you ever into MMA at all? MMA, Frank Yeager, obviously, is one of my dad's wrestlers uh, when he was little. So, yeah, Frankie's like my – I have like two older brothers, Vinny Delafov and Frank Yeager. So, yeah, I mean, I'm at Frankie's house every weekend. We go hang out. Um, yeah, so we were in MMA. I was going to those fights, watching him win world titles in UFC. So that's why I have MMA aspirations all due to him. So, yeah. So how serious are the MMA aspirations? I think I'm going to give it a try. I mean, be dumb not to have a great, there's a great support system in Tom's River, New Jersey. So I uh, definitely give it a try. If it's not for me, it's not for me. You can learn that in one fight. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I don't need one fight to know it's not for me. That, uh, you know, already like, feels like a tough guy thing. And I'm not from Jersey. So that means <laughs> I'm not tough. <laughs> I don't mind getting punched in the face. So yeah. boy, we are different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I learned to that, learned that at a young age. Uh, would you or did you ever consider uh, the Olympics as a possibility? Yeah, I'm on the Puerto Rican Olympic team. So, okay. Yeah. So, I, uh, so when they I plan on going this year, but obviously it shut down. But oh my God, Scott, I was going to say because there was that whole thing a few years back where wrestling was basically off the Olympics. I know. And then it got back on. You had to, I assume, go crazy when you found out it was back on. Yeah, we were, it was nuts. Like t shirts, save wrestling. Everybody's like, save Olympic wrestling and stuff. But I mean, obviously it's back now. So, I was really, I was young then. I feel like what, that was like 2008, 2012, oh, maybe. Yeah. 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 So, uh, okay. So COVID comes and the Olympics are delayed. Like, how did you find out about that? I, we just figured if I was having a national tournament and everything else just shut down, I kind of assumed, but I was get, like, so I, it was big tens and then nationals. And then a two or one week after I was going to, I was going to have to fly to Bulgaria to make like qualify Puerto Rico for the weight. So I, once nationals didn't happen, I was like, man, I have to make 125 again. And then obviously it got delayed again. So yeah, world shut down. So when do you get serious about Olympic training again? That's what I've been training this whole time right now. I've been only wrestling freestyle. Are there new dates though? Like you have to hit a certain thing or or make a certain trial at a certain time before the summer comes? Uh, I, I, they were planning on December because there was a world championship supposed to happen in December. There was going to be a Puerto Rican nationals, but they're not sending a team anymore. So I imagine in January and April or when I'm going to have to wrestle for Puerto Rico. Okay. Well, good luck. That'd be Thank awesome. you. Yeah, if, awesome. if you end up winning gold, I hope that when, you know, it's done, you just grab the microphone and say, New Jersey. I will. <laughs> I will. Trust me. <laughs> All right, Sebastian, before we go, we're going to do before you go. These are four questions unrelated to anything. Uh, number one, best sporting event you've ever been to purely as a fan? UFC. Um, probably UFC Atlantic City. I got to see Frankie fight for the first time in a while in person. And uh, I was old enough to understand kind of what was going on. So that was, that was like three years ago. So the last time I saw him fight, I was probably like 11, 12. And I was just like, come on, Frankie, I didn't know what, like the techniques that were going on and stuff. So that was probably the best one I've had. And he won that one. So that's, that was probably my best sporting event. I've been to boxing matches as a fan, but I've never been to an MMA. What's it like sitting in the crowd there? It's a little different. Um, like that one, <laughs> that UFC event, I, uh, there was like six fights in a boardwalk. It was in boardwalk hall, Atlantic city where the, uh high school wrestling states are for new jersey um and there was like six fights in the stands you're just like man this is new if this is new jersey what's new jersey so that one was like that but then we went to can i went to canada not last summer i think not this summer last one before that he fought max holloway um yeah it was it's just it's a different experience it's loud you know um especially when you're sitting front row i I get to sit front row and i'm 
yelling things to him, then he, I know he can hear me. I know he can hear my dad right next to me. So it's, it's, we, I, we, I see it in a different light than probably a fan would. Right. Yeah. Front row, anything is going to yeah. be unbelievable. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Number two, the food that you love to eat that everyone else thinks is just weird or gross. Mm, clams probably. Yeah. A lot of people don't think clams are gross, but I love seafood. Seafood is yeah. one of my favorites. Are you allowed to have clams when you're they're pretty, I don't, I don't like go out of my way to make them and stuff. It's, it's a long process, but I mean, I don't think they're that bad for me. The butter may be, but I'll just eat a clam. That's not bad. It's worth it. It's yeah, worth it. It's worth it. Who's your hero? Uh, my dad. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, just, just what he does every day. He's a grinder and something you can look up to. He's always going to work every day and then he wrestles for three hours after and man, guy's a grinder so and my mom my mom my mom's a trooper wakes up four in the morning goes to work goes to elite does registration you know so they're both and then i'll add frankie to that too because that guy heart of a line so you got three different types of heroes i guess i have you know heart of a line never gives up i mean that's the guy type of guy you want to be like so that's good yeah i suppose any man who's still wrestling in his 50s is worthy of being my dad yeah right <laughs> crazy right. That was number three. Number four is um, in your dad's prime versus you right now, who wins? Me. Really? For sure. You sure? 100%. How would he answer that question? Me. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I know for sure. How come? How can you be so sure? I'm, ver I'm, this is, I'm version 2.0. He's 1.0, you know? <laughs> I'm the upgraded version. That's that's a great. Well, he doesn't have a tattoo of a fish on his arm, probably. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to get him. I'm trying to get him to get the our like uh, club's tattoo on him. He's scared of needles, so. Oh, I love. <laughs> that would be my next one. Of course, yes. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Sebastian, that was great, man. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Appreciate you having me on. So to recap, his grandfather has all his matches on video and paper. He very well might make it to fighting MMA one day soon. And uh, yeah, you can call him Seabass. My thanks to Sebastian Rivera for joining me. Heads up, our pal Alex Rue recently had former Hawkeye basketball star Peter Jock on his Take 10 podcast. Be sure to check that out. But that'll do it for this episode. From the Big Ten Network in Chicago, I'm Mike Hall. We'll see you next week. Thank you